Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to Mumu Outdoors. Today we are out in the Delta. What a beautiful day. Uh, the weather is warm, no wind. Uh, but the downside is, it's a full moon. So, uh, we're having a really tough time catching fish. We've been underwater for about three hours, but uh, I had one bite in my buddy Johnny, Mr. Super Clean Myers. Uh, he had one bite, he caught one fish. Uh, my buddy Steve, a mother of kayak angler, uh, he had a couple bites. And, and Buck Johnson, uh, kayak surfing champion, uh, I think he had a couple bites, but no fish. So between four of us, only one fish landed. Everybody got like one or two bites. So it's been really, really tough day. Since it's really uh, slow, I wanna take the time to give you guys how to catch landlocked king salmon. So those of you who watched my uh, video about a couple weeks ago, um, I went to the lake and uh, I had I got a limit of uh, king salmon, which is five. And uh, the biggest one was about 22 inches. And I believe the smallest one was like 19 inches. So they were really, really good size, uh, king salmon. And uh, out of those five, I caught one on the troll and I caught four on the secret bait that uh, Mike uh, from Fisherman's Warehouse in Sacramento uh, told me about. Uh, let's go over the uh, trolling rig uh, real quick. So what I use is the dodger, a uh, little small dodger. And the bait I used was a little hoochie like this. This is about 2.5 inches long. So for those of you uh, who does not know the difference between the dodger and the flasher, flasher is that one that spins, so it gives out a lot of flash, uh, a lot of shines, and but the dodger basically goes side to side. So sometimes I use flasher uh, when I'm trolling for halibut or salmon, uh, but sometimes I use dodgers instead. So when do I use the dodger? I use the dodger when the bait does not have the movement. Um, so for example, so when I'm trolling with the frozen herring or anchovy, I make a little bend on the anchovy and then I make it spin so the bait has movement. Uh, when I'm trolling with a uh, creeper anchovy, same thing, the bait spins so the bait has the movement. But when I'm trolling something like, like this, hoochie, uh, it does not have a movement at all. Basically it just follows straight in straight line. So what Dodger does is, since Dodger moves side to side, uh, your bait um, at the end uh, will move along with it. So when the bait has movement, I use the flasher. When the bait does not have movement, I use the Dodger to make the, uh, make the bait move around a little bit. My trolling setup for King Salmon is basically just like Kokuni setup. Uh, except the bait is going to be slightly bigger and you're going to tip it with a small piece of either herring or anchovy. So from here, I got a B chain and I got about 2.5, about 3 foot of line to the dodger. And uh, from the dodger, I got about 1 foot of leader. So starting with the B chain, I got about one foot of line, and at the end, I got two size number two octopus hook, uh, both on a snail knot, and basically 2.5 inch uh, hoochie right on top of the hooks. So size of the hoochie right here uh, should match the hatch, uh, which means if the size of the bait fish in the lake is smaller than this, you probably want to go smaller. If the size of the bait fish is bigger than this, you probably want to go bigger. So when you connect the connect your leader, your hoochie leader, onto the dodger, and when you are trolling, your dodger is going to swing side to side, and the hoochie is going to follow side to side. So it gives the movement to the hoochie. And like I said before, uh, you cut a little a piece of uh, either anchovy uh, or herring. Uh, you want to fillet it, no bone, uh, just a little piece, maybe a, 
uh, one inch by a half an inch and uh, we basically hook it through the boat hook and troll at slow speed around 1.5 miles per hour so I found out that the Lenla King Salmon they're nibblers uh, they nibble a lot before they take it sometimes they do take it right away but a lot of times they nibble 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 and that's why having a cut bait uh, at the end a little fillet uh, at the end is very important they're gonna nibble 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 and they're gonna taste the fish and then they're gonna uh, commit to it and go for it but like I said sometimes they just go for it right away um, but a lot of times most of the time from my experience uh, they nibble a lot so that's pretty much a uh, trolling setup uh, the lime I'm using uh, is 10 pound it's a little bit thick I would probably rather use 8 pound line mono uh, or fluorocarbon whatever you like uh, but I didn't have a 8 pound mono uh, on hand uh, at the time when I made the leader so I was using a 10 pound but it worked out okay so now uh, like I said I caught 4 fish on the drift and I would have never thought of this uh, bait would work so what you need is you need a, a little dart head uh, this is from Gamagasu uh, daughter 26 is the model uh, it's got 3 odd hook with a 3 8th of an ounce a uh, little dart head and with that what you need is a tube of bass lure uh, a white one pearl white bass lure this one is made by Gizit uh, but I'm pretty sure different brand will work just fine and the tube is about 3.5 inches long so basically you put your saliva or wet the jig head saliva works, works better but at the same time you don't want to be licking this uh, you can spit on it and put some saliva on it and just feed the jig head inside the tube and you're gonna puncture the uh, you're gonna puncture the tube so that you could have your eye of the jig exposed and then you run a line through it and basically just tie it nothing else uh, from the main line it's basically a tie a uni knot or a polymer knot or whatever uh, whatever knot uh, you guys like to use just tie it so th the technique is uh, once you get on the water once you get into the area you're gonna look for the bait ball let's say you are in a 50 feet of water and uh, you see the bait ball from 30 feet deep to 50 feet deep uh, basically you're gonna lower this guy uh, right at the top of the bait ball so if the bait ball is 30 to 50 you're gonna let this guy sit on at 30 feet oh yeah and you also want to tip this with the uh, cut uh, fillet of herring or anchovy and basically you keep it on there you keep it at the 30 feet uh, Michael is telling me this was mooching but technically uh, mooching is you know you lower it down you reel it up slowly uh, in the zone and you lower it back down but with this basically or uh, drifting this thing at 30 feet so when you are drifting you want to make sure the line is vertical as possible uh, if you are against the headwind you want to paddle or pedal uh, just enough so that the line doesn't go diagonal keep the line straight as possible and I got a lot of nibbles on it a lot of nibbles nibble 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 and they will just stop and then they'll come back nibble 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 a lot of time they steal the fillet so you rebate it lower it down at the depth and they just nibble 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 and nibble 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 and then uh, once you feel the weight um, then you set the hook and you reel in the fish so with this guy as you can see this is much bigger than the hoochie uh, but my theory is if you keep this guy vertical like so and you have a little piece of fillet down here and when this guy is in the water 
the tentacles they move around in, in the water. So when the fish look at it from the top, they don't see the whole bait. They basically see the tentacles moving around very slow. Uh, so they get intrigued and they come up and nibble, nibble, nibble. They taste the fish and they go for it. So that's why the keeping the line vertical as possible is the key using the tube. And I got so many nibbles. Oh man, I probably got more than a dozen set of nibbles. Every time I try to set the hook, uh, it just wouldn't stick. And I found out that uh, when I actually feel the weight of the fish and the set the hook, I got them every time. Try this out a little too with a little filet of anchovy or herring. Worked really great for me. I had four fish on this while the other people were kind of struggling. This was the key for me to get, get the limit of king salmon. So there you go. If you guys have any questions, please comment down below. And thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more. Go outside and enjoy the outdoors.